So we've all heard the fairy tale. Girl meets boy, or girl meets girl, whatever the case may be. They fall in love and they live happily ever after. But most of us know that it doesn't always work out that way. In fact, most of the time it doesn't. Um, so after my marriage broke up, I decided to look at love from a bit of a different lens. Um, I decided to approach it from a scientific view. Many people would probably say it's called Dirty Minds because they think I'm a perv, including many of the commenters on the Gawker piece. The truth is, I decided to call it Dirty Minds after speaking to a researcher who studies epigenetics. Epigenetics is a blossoming field that looks at all the ways that the environment can change the way that our genes are expressed. And when he told me about it, he said that behavior, because of epigenetics, is actually very complicated, almost dirty. When I relayed that to a friend of mine, she said, Dirty Minds, there's your title. Everybody has an opinion, um, but the truth is, I believe there is such a thing as sexual addiction. The areas of the brain that are involved in love and sex are the same ones that are involved with drug addiction. It's not too far-fetched to believe that they could be hijacked by perhaps some brain damage or some kind of environmental stimulus. But whether that pro athlete or that politician who happened to get caught cheating on his wife this week is actually an addict, that's going to be between them and their physician. This is a question I get asked a lot. And honestly, the answer is to remain very, very still. As it turns out, if you move around too much having that orgasm, the fMRI can't pick up the activation. So practice makes perfect. After a week or two of trying to stay as still as possible, which, as I know, Cosmo heartily recommends against doing, you too could have an orgasm in an fMRI scanner. Through the course of researching the book, I learned a lot about different brain systems that are involved in love, different neurochemicals like vasopressin, dopamine, um, oxytocin that help mediate love and really make it something that is not just an emotion but a drive, something that changes your behavior, changes your focus, your attention, and really, in a sense, can almost change who you are. And of course, there's more than one kind of love because the fairy tale doesn't end. It's just you and your beloved living happily ever after. There's kids, there's religious devotion, there's friendship, and all those have a neurobiological basis too.